Hey guys, this is John. You're watching Code Logs, and in this video, we are going to see how do we set up a sort of development environment as well as develop some applications uh, and good useful patterns that you can follow uh, when you are developing your own sort of application. And uh, to cut short, let's start the application development straight away. So the first thing we need to set up is that we need to install Docker. So Docker can be installed using sudo apt install docker.io okay so using this command you can install docker and similarly you can install another require tool called docker compose okay so since we already got docker compose and docker installed i'll move on to the next step which is you know, installing nbm so we can install this in two ways. So one is using curl command and another one is curly kit. So curl by default will not be installed in some systems. So for that what you can do is you can use the similar sudo apt install command and install curl. Okay. We already installed it and next step I'm going to do is I'm copy this curl command and paste it here. That is also already installed anyway. So I will, I'm just showing you how to do. Uh, next step is like you need to copy these three values and paste it below uh, to load the NVM session there. Okay, now we'll install the latest stable version of Node.js. So to do that, you can check the Node.js website to see what's the latest LC LTS version. So LTS is 16. 14.2 and uh, if you try just in 16 it will install the most recent version and uh, i'm already installed the same version uh, so the next step that needs to be done is that uh, we need to go to the hyperledger sawtooth website go to the official sawtooth hyperledger page click documentation then go to the setting up sawtooth node for testing part download the sort of docker compose file uh, we use the default sort of docker which will be using a dev mode engine dev mode engine is just for development purpose i would say this is uh, not mandatory this is not mandatory and these two are mandatory not mandatory to have okay but for the tutorial we just copy the whole thing okay and uh, i've created a folder called tutorial and uh, this tutorial folder is empty as you can see i will create a new file uh, name it docker compose.yaml so i name it like this because uh, if i name it in some other way i have to run the command like docker compose hyphen f pick the file name okay so that is the default yaml and uh, up okay so instead of doing this if I keep the name as docker compose.yaml, I can just run docker compose up. Okay, I need to add the sudo. Okay, now I need to stop the old server. Okay, so now our server is up and running, and uh, we'll go back to the documentation and set check if everything is working fine. Okay, so to check that. Uh, like I said, we need to go into the shell. Uh, to enter the shell, uh, we will execute docker execute hyphen it mean interactive uh, terminal, so interactive session on the sort tooth shell default that uh, short tooth shell default container name plus bash. So the bash is uh, default in open to and the Mac, ba Mac based in uh, OS. So the bash terminal is what we are going to open okay when we copy this and execute it here under the permission error we can resolve it by just running sudo okay now we are logged into as the root user onto that session now we will try to check if the uh, rest api is running so rest api 8008 slash blocks okay so now we are able to hit the endpoint so if you want to access that rest api outside the ap outside the environment okay so now we got the 
block informations and uh, the similar block information is being written here okay now the second step that we are going to do is like try out the in key transaction process so to check uh, how the, the transaction gets submitted and the blocks are getting generated okay so this command over here will create a batch file okay so in a minute we'll see what is the batch file containing okay so batches dot in key okay so let's okay so this batches dot in key that got generated using this command create batch will contain the blocks the batches uh, that needs to be sent to the blockchain okay so this this batch contains information like which transaction family to call what's the version number that needs to be uh, sent to so now we got the batch and uh, we will send this batch to the rest api okay so so as i'm meeting the transaction to the rest api our transactions are now submit there and if you go to the blocks and refresh a page now we can see there are a lot more blocks got submitted and you can see that same family name family version and what was the payload everything every information is actually stored here okay so now the blockchain is working as expected so i'll click quickly stop the server since we don't need it anymore we have to write some code to start with so to start with uh, we have we tr i tried to check into that uh, official sawtooth sdk but it hasn't been updated in a while so i took the liberty of uh, cloning their project and publishing the latest sdk so i haven't changed anything in the code apart from building it and publishing it in a, another name So, tooth SDK. so many people have published it uh, and uh, this is my version and I'm going to install Sawtooth SDK JS. If the point of time you are trying out this tutorial and uh, the official one this Sawtooth version gets published I think then you can use that version but this has been updated in the last four years so i'll quickly create a node.js project i will quickly install npm sort with sdk.js our package got installed. I'm going to install a more package called NodeMon. Then I have to modify this particular script with start script, which will just run the index.js and uh, dev script, which will auto auto reload my application whenever there is a change. So. So now code is ready. I'm going to run npm run dev. Before that, I need to create the index.js file. npm. Okay. So now it's ready. So then the second step after this is to import the basic transaction process related code from the sort of SDK JS trans processor folder so this file will be we'll take the transaction processor out of it and uh, create an instance of transaction processor list and uh, connect to a node okay so the node the validator node we are running validator underscore url it's tcp 4004 okay so you can basically find this information over here in that validator so the port that is exposed outside is 4004 okay 
so since our connection is now running so if we had to have some transaction processes actually added here uh, it will be added to the uh, validator so we don't need to uh, include our validator over here all the time it can run independently on a different server and connect to the service so when this is there it will gradually unregister the transaction process okay it's mandatory because else like while reconnecting there will be some issues okay so now our stk process like our code is connected to the validator again and on disconnect it will read this step unregister the transaction process properly 